presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Boca Raton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that somebody else is there with you while you're, while you're trading this crazy market, either up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great week, folks, and a great month, June 6th. Here we go. Surrender and let go of the past. Whatever life takes away from you. Let it go. When you surrender and let go of the past, you, feel, you allow yourself to be fully alive in the moment. Letting go of the past means that you can enjoy, enjoy the dream that is happening right here, right now. That's an amazing card, folks. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 158, NASDAQ off 25, S&P's off 9. Gold, gold contract up $8.10, trading at 1977 an ounce. We have silver down 9 cents at $23.65. Light sweet crude up 26 cents, $72 flat, notes and bonds. The 10-year note down up two ticks rather, 113.29, the 30-year flat at 127.30 and king dollar. King dollar flat also at 104.015, euro 107, yen 139, the British pound 124 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. I want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. Well, let's go to the uh, E-minis first. So, we take a look at the E-minis here. You know, it's been a sideways day, folks. The amount of energy that got taken out of the marketplace on Friday, that was a huge day. You know, we're going to have Tim Ward on it uh, Monday. I mean, uh, the first break. We'll see what he has said about that. But I suspect that's going to be another sign of strength. You know, the intraday out here in the E-mini... You know, you just, uh, you, you came down about 10 points, you know, you flip back around just as quick. Well, not just as quick. You're down to, you came down to the 42.73, and then we just basically have tested it again. What's holding this up now is right across, if you want to see how this works, this is what's crazy. You're going to see just a little bit lower at uh, 47.69. You can get to that 47.69 for sure. That's where one of the, at nine, at 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday, that is where we, we excelled up. Now, this is what's wild, folks, okay? You know, and on Friday, I was saying this, actually, that I, I felt the market was going to keep running because, you know, the bottom line is that you get a shot week, you know, bottom line, you're window dressing all the above. And then it just kept going with no volume whatsoever. So this is the first time, this is the test of that area. That's what's going on here. That's what's coming down. It's coming down for that test. So, bottom line, looks like it's going to be a successful test. We go to the NQs, well, and then we go to the SPY. So, if we go to the SPY, you're going to have shot volume out here today, no doubt about that. You know, we went over the high. I suspect it's going to, you know, basically close a little bit lower. It, the SPY's down a point and a half right now. You know, but it's going to, you know, bottom line is that the, the next swing point is 431. I suspect it's going to go after that 431. We take a look at the three Qs, same type of setup in the three Qs. Uh, the differential in the Qs is that the contraction of volume is pretty dramatic. You know, we're at 30, 38 million right now. You know, we, we did 53, which is a, which a, which a contraction period, because what we were doing is 72. So you went from 72 to 53. Now, today we'll probably do about 48. And, you know, you're not holding price. And when you start seeing those smaller 
price spreads, that's saying that, you know, we can very well get a pullback. We go into the gold contract. What do we have with gold contract? Gold contract, you know, came down to the area of 17, uh, 17, 19, 53 today. It did reject lower price there. Right now you're at 1977. It has light of volume. So there's a little consolidation in here. Now we gotta remember something that the gold contract is in a confirmed ABC structure on the way down. This would throw it into a complex ABC structure. So we'll see how that worked, you know, we had broken the B point with volume. We got above it again. We came back down again. Friday was the down day with volume in a monster way inside the gold market. So I suspect, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that shakes out. And we get the king dollar. Well, no, no, but notes and bonds. Notes and bonds, my, my take, folks, okay, this is kind of a, a conviction also, is that higher price, lower uh, yields are coming at us. You know, what you had out here today, we did 1.2 million contracts in the 10. You got to 113.10. You're at 113.29 right now. If I take this and I put this TY, and I put this on a generic chart, just so you can, what a generic chart does, folks, is tie them all together simultaneously. TY1. And, whoops. There we go, we put this. On a monthly, let's do it this way. Let's do it on a weekly for three years first. Okay, you can see in a weekly with three years, what you have is this. You actually have, at this point, we have one, two, three higher highs and three lower lows. My take is that rates have picked out. And what has also happened here is this, is that this is gonna be really wild if that's the case. You know why, folks? Because the market it, it picked up on this last October. Our, our, the 4%, 4.2% 4 in the 10 was last October. So that's pretty intense. But you can see, you know, if you're a trend follower, this is a trend. This is a trend and that trend is saying that, hey, guess what, we're going up. And then if, what it also does is that we actually did break the trend, and we did that all the way back in, um, yeah, November. And so the next stop up here, or where it's going, is 122. And then if we take, if we go, when we take a look at the 10 year right now, the 10 years at 3.6. You take a look at this for the last three months, you can see it's 3.9 is the high, but then we take it for six months, you're gonna see the 4.0, and I believe that's the number, you know, four, no, 4.2, over six months ago. That's, that's what's going on there. 4.2, you know, was the high, two, look at that. There was a 2%, from the high to low, last 12 months is 2%, folks. That's amazing. So six months, we're talking 3.3 to four. Pretty wild, man. That's, and rates make, make a difference. Rates make a monster difference, period. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading down 135. Nasdaq's off 17. S&P's off five and a half. We'll come right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading down 155. We got the Nasdaq off 14, S and P's off uh, seven, and we're gonna let's go over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord. Now, Tim, folks, is gonna be doing a great workshop for us. He's gonna be doing a couple workshops. Uh, the first one is gonna be coming this Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. That's gonna be on the S and P 500. The second one is gonna be on June 15th from 4 to 6 also, and in, inside of those. Two hours, folks, are going to get a great hour and a half of education, a half hour of asking Tim questions, because the bottom line, he has some great indicators, um, indicators that, that you can put on your charts, but the bottom line, these are indicators that, you know, bottom line folks uh, just are not attuned to. That's, that's what it really comes down to, as to looking at the market at lows and at looking at highs. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, I'm glad to have Glad to be on again. So uh, totally. So uh, hey, let I me am. ask you something, right? So so, la so Friday, last Friday, that was quite a day, right? Yeah, we broke out. Uh, my opinion, you know, we, we showed that that weekly SPX to VIX ratio. Yes. And it, it was making higher highs, for, and it leads the S and P's. So it was predicting that the S P should break above that, you know, four. I think it's four fifteen area. Right. On the S P Ys. And uh, you know, went sideways all through April uh, and May, and finally we broke out above that area. So at 415, 417 on the SPY should now be support. So right, and that's um, what you're like looking for. You're looking for that sign of strength. Not going to be and May go away type thing. So if, if May's up, a lot of times that kind of carries through the summer. So yes, we'll have to wait and see. Yes. So, so you know. The, we talked quite a bit, Tim, about the aspect of you know what happens at, at when you use your indicators looking at panic lows and lows, right? And right. you know, so the, the you know, like I, I'm looking at the market today, and it's like I, I can understand why the market's just going sideways. It's down a little because the amount of strength that it took on Friday, right? You know, I mean, it had the Dow up 700 points. Everything was up like dramatically. What what right. is, like the between the tick and the trend? What do you look for? When you are approaching highs, the highs actually, um, 
uh, a 10 day average of the uh, trend around 0.8, you got to really be careful. Uh, matter of fact, when we if we start re- approaching that level, I'll start showing that uh, indicator. Okay. Um, you know, on on our shows and stuff like that. Right yes. now, we're, we're 109. Okay. And uh, usually, uh, 10 day average around 120. You're usually looking at lows. Ideally, you know, major lows you that get up around 1.5. Uh, so, but you know, if you kind of a, a trending market, it usually stays above one. Okay. And so we got like 109. That that means we can still go higher. Uh, but we start getting down when everybody gets exuberant. You now that trend is the uh, uh, up, uh, well, the definition of a trend of T R I N is the uh, advancing issues over declining issues divided by uh, advancing volume over declining volume. And now, if you do the numbers, when all this all the volume starts going into the up stocks, that trend starts to drop down below one. Right. And the more right. uh, stocks that are going up with higher volume, the more dangerous that trend becomes. And when you get a 10-day average around 1.8, you got quite a bit of exuberance going in the market. And so it's an area where things don't last for long and right. things can get ugly fairly fast. So, yeah. You know, it's interesting uh, what you brought up last week is that, that, you know, when we were talking about the aspect that, you know, you were coming into a panic low a few months ago. Like just today right. on that little downdraft that we got, Tim, right? We got a downdraft, a uh, down tick of minus 1295. So yeah. it's yeah. like, you yeah. know, and what Tim was talking about, folks, is that every just little pullback at all, it almost seems like people are panicking. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, you know, that's not the end of the world, man. You know, you, you just came down 10 S&P points, but I thought that was kind of intriguing, right? Do you know what I mean? Because, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, actually, Joe Granville had it back. You know, he's uh, he, he's not a manner, but he was kind of the oh uh, him and that um, I can't think of his name. You know, Joe Granville. He always called you want you want to have a, a wall of worry, right? Uh, when the market's going up, right? And he didn't really quite understand how to define exactly what indicator is a wall of worry. Uh, yes. So I kind of always followed him. So if the market's going up, people are worried about the market for some whatever reason, you know, the debt ceiling or interest rates are too high or too yes. low or something. There's always a hook in the market uh, that people worry about. They're afraid to buy because it's a wall of worry. And those are the type of markets you want to buy. Right. And let's get back to that trend thing. So you know, as the market's going up, the trend kind of stays relatively high above one. It's usually, you know, people are kind of worried, but when everybody's convinced that, yeah, this market's going to go through the ceiling, that's when the trend drops below 0.8, and that's when you get these highs. So, yes. Uh, but the wall of worry is, is kind of a key here. And, and there's really no, you know, from the stuff I'm looking at, there's really nobody really bullish here. So, no, I, mean, I, I listen, I can see not it. They're scared, I, but they're not bullish either. So. You know, I mean, the, the, you know, like, let's say six, eight weeks ago, even when you're coming on saying, hey, man, this thing wants to go higher. I remember everyone in the traders down and saying, oh, my God, you know, like, you know, a lot of us were bearish, me in particular, right? And then I said, well, I got a feeling this thing's going to go higher now. And it's, it's hard to wrap your head around it because there are so many things out there and because we've gone so high. But guess what? It is what it is, man. Do you know what I mean? So it's Yeah, like, it, it is what it is. It's, it, it takes you a while to, to, you know, figure out what kind of a, you know, the, the fear gauge works well. The trend works well. The ticks work well. Yeah. And that really gives down to what the market really thinks, what's going on, what people think. And I do look at sentiment indicators, too, when everybody's kind of lean and bullish. i got about five pretty good ones that have worked, have stood the test of time, I guess you might say. And, yes. And when everybody kind of chugs in, I look at the... Um, Oh, individual investors, uh, right. the money managers, and I, actually, I look at the put call ratios, equity put call ratios. Yeah, you know, whatever. If people are buying, leaning on the put side, that's usually a good sign. The public's pretty bearish. Right. Uh, so, and and all those things come at low. So, you know, if you're scared to buy, it's usually you're probably going to make it's the money. Good. No, I'm if with if it, you're man. not scared to I'm buy, you know, you may be doing something wrong. So, yeah, so. no, I can see that. Well, listen, yeah. folks. Okay, you know, Tim is an amazing technician. You're going to have not only a blast, you're going to learn a huge amount about how the market moves. 
and people will be asking you later, like, how do you know that? Okay, that's the bottom line. So come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see them right on the front page under featured content. You can, you know, go to both workshops. You can go to one workshop. Just hit that banner. It's going to be from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, this coming uh, Thursday, man. Well, listen, it's always a okay. pleasure, Tim. You know, you have a, great, a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you and look for the workshop in a big way. All right. Thanks, Tim. Talk to you soon. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 176. NASDAQ's off 9. The S&Ps are off 7. XBT, that we got to go. We haven't done this for a long time, but uh, guess what? You're going to be back in the news here, Bitcoin. So this is going to get intriguing, particularly because, you know, you can see this break here today, 1800 bucks. It's a big number, man. It's particularly a big number because if we go like this and we put this just in a three-year, you know, Bitcoin itself, folks, had only done a point. Two, three retracement. It couldn't even make a dead cat bounce. That in itself was pretty intense. And, you know, so what the news is, and this, this is where it's going to get really intriguing because the news today, you know, is that our SEC, U.S. Security and Exchange Commission, you know, basically accused 
Binance and the chief executive officer of basically, you throw it all. They got, they, they're accusing them of everything, basically. Mishandling customer funds, misleading investors and regulators, breaking security rules. You know, the 136-page complaint that was filed this morning. Um, conflict of interest, you, you name it, it, it's on there. The thing that's it's so intriguing about this is that all of this has been out here for so long. Uh, let's just go through a few of these, okay? Bit, Binance uh, is saying they call in, disappointing saying that they engaged with the SEC in good faith negotiations to settle the matter. The exchange also said that the SEC was misguided in not providing clarity over the rules for digital assets. Um, while, the, while we take the SEC allegations seriously, they should not be subject to an SEC enforcement action, let alone an emergency basis. Among other allegations, the SEC that two Binance linked tokens, BNB and BUSD. Now, BNB, folks, is the largest token in the world, okay? He started this in 2017. It is 2023, right? It took the SEC six years to get to them. It's, it's bizarre. The whole thing's bizarre, man. Because, but anyway, the SEC alleges that Binance and its U.S. affiliates weren't actually independent from each other in a prop, in a properly functioned as an exchange, broker, dealer, and clearing agency. The key, one of the keys here is that, you know, they're never going to get this guy. I mean... He'll just stay offshore or whatever. But it's it's like one of those things that what, what has happened, and this is what happens in bureaucracy, the, see the part where they say that the SCC was misguided and not providing clarity over rules for digital assets. Well, the rules are quite clear <laughs> on what is a security and what is not a security, folks. And, you know... When you look at that, I suspect that most of these, particularly these, uh, the tokens are actually securities, okay? Because if you, anyway, you get the gist of it. It takes six years to make a case and you have the largest one in the world. Well, this is gonna be another six years and now they're in it for 12 years. But you can see what it's actually done to Bitcoin, okay? Because, you know, Bitcoin and the rest of the world, yeah, unless all the rest of the world, you know, regulators go after them, which they might, you know. Bottom line, though, is that there's plenty of people that are in the United States that more than likely are basically, you know, saying, hey, you know, I, I'm getting out of it right now, you know, because this chart doesn't look good. If, the, if, Bit, if Bitcoin breaks, we're at 25,533, 25,188. It breaks that, you get yourself in the next range to 19,000. And there's hardly any support at 19, and then you're all the way back down to 16 again. I think 16 was it, right, on this get-go? Yeah, it was. 16 was it. 15, 15,008. But you can see, when you look at a chart like this, that is not a good-looking chart. <laughs> so we'll see where this is going to shake out. And, you know, the amount of bread that's involved, I mean, is huge. And this is when you're going to see the power um, that is going to be out there, meaning the law power, the law firms. It's going to be huge, man, huge. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here today. What we have, you have Tesla up uh, $3.50. You have uh, Ford's up 17 Advanced Micro's up 30 You get Unity Software up $2.70. Intel's off one fifty. Let's go inside the NDX 100. So inside the... The NDX 100, you have Palo Alto. This is this is at all time highs, man. This is just performing beyond belief, belief man. It's up 4.8 percent, and now I mean it's just a huge performer. Zscale is up 3.5 percent, and you got uh, Zoom Video up 3.2. Take it away from it. Intel's down four and a half. Marvel Technologies off three and a half, and Cognizant Technology is off uh, 3.6. Inside the Dow Industrials. The strength versus the weakness point-wise inside the Dow. So you get Amgen up 24 points, putting 24 positive points, and we're down 164. Microsoft 11, taken away from it. 3M minus 28. You got Caterpillar minus 27. Boeing minus 27. Nothing heavy out. Uh, Home Depot minus 19. 
Let's get over to Home Depot for a second. Take a look at Home Depot. Because what you did, what we did have out here this morning, folks. Yeah, so Home Depot can't get out of this consolidation. What we did have out here this morning is that, yeah, the, the producer price index came out. And it barely moved. So that may be the first heads up, folks. Um, no, the manufacturing index. That may be the first move that, you know, it was 50, I believe it was 50.01 when it came out. I think that's what it was. I'll get the exact number. But when it goes under 50, that's when you start two of them under 50. That's when a recession starts coming at you. So we'll see how that shakes out. What is going to happen, I can tell you this, in the state of Florida, <laughs> it's, it's pretty intense what's happening in the state of Florida or will happen in the state of Florida in January, no, July 1st. It's already happened. Now, things slow down in the summer in Florida because of the fact of the matter that, you know, People go, people have a couple houses, they go back to their house and all of this. But we, the DeSantis put a law into effect, and this is really, uh, this is going to hit a lot of business, particularly the restaurant business, the construction business, the, I'm not quite sure about the food, the um, agricultural business, because they get, get so many visas that come in. But check out, this is what the law is. The law is if you have more than 25 employees, you have to absolutely use E-Verify. And so E-Verify is the, the government deal that, you know, you're verifying your employees on a continual basis, making sure that they have all their correct papers, right? Well, the bottom line is that the, the, the fine structure is astronomical. The fine structure is $1,000 per day per person that you have employed. So what has already happened in the restaurant business is that folks are already leaving going to, you know, Kentucky, Georgia, Louisiana. The construction business, that is the one that's going to be the biggest mess. I, I suspect that's the one that's going to be the biggest mess because there's definitely huge amounts of, you know, immigrants without papers, you know, all over the country, but we have definitely have plenty of them. Um, and if you run a company that has more than 25 employees, well, guess what? I don't think most of them are going to hang around. And it's going to be like, okay, who's going to do the work now? <laughs> it's, it's just bizarre, man. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Dow, Dow is down 155. Nasdaq's off 8. S&P's down 5. We're coming right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow uh, down 151. NASDAQ's off three. S&P's off four. Let's see what Apple has, folks. Okay, so this is the, one of their big announcements here. This is, uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's put it over here so you can see what this looks like. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Apple unveiled a long-awaited mixed reality headset, capping more than seven years of development, vaulting the company into the market that could someday transform computing. The device called Apple Vision Pro was introduced Monday at the World Development Conference in uh, California. Uh, the final day of the hard day. The price is, <laughs> I think is, price, the price is $3,499. Jeez, unbelievable. And they expect to arrive in 2024. In a wide-ranging presentation, Apple demonstrated the features and spotlight content planned for the product, which resembles high-tech ski goggles, including games, interaction, video from Disney, from the Walt Disney Company. The headset is the latest Apple next big thing, a groundbreaking new product that can uh, help the tech giant maintain sales. It marks the first major product since 2016, from 2015. Imagine that. Wow. Okay, so we all going to be walking around like that? I don't think so, folks. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely better looking than the one from Facebook, but we'll see where this thing goes. You know, you know it's really wild when you think about it. So let's see. The company described the new interface, new interface as spatial, spatial computing. A feature called EyeSight slows an image and shows an image in your eye on the outside of the headset where people are nearby. The product also shows those people in your field of vision while you were in the device, an attempt to keep users more engaged with the outside world. You are kidding me, man. They think these people are going to wear these things. Oh, my God. The so-called digital crown, taking a turn from the Apple Watch, switches the headset between Augmented and virtual reality. Apple said it studied thousands of people's heads to in turn to ensure the product would be comfortable and f filled more than filed more than 5,000 patents. Apple's launch set sets up a showdown with Facebook, Meta platforms, which currently owns 81% of the VR headset market. Disney CEO Bob Iger joined the presentation saying that Disney streaming services will be available on the device on the day it launches. Yeah, so, okay, so you, you're going to put a device on. Hey, we'll see where it goes. I was going to say, you put a device on, you want to watch a movie? I don't, I can't picture that. What I can't, <laughs> anyway, I'm not even going to get my head wrapped around that. Because guess what? If you ever told me, like, 20 years ago that everyone would be walking down the street holding their phones and looking at their phones and not looking at the street, I would have told you you're out of your mind, too. So, I mean, 20 years from now, man, wouldn't that be wild if everyone's walking around like a sci-fi movie with all these big goggles on? And 
All it would take, folks, is that who's ever not wearing the goggles is gonna rule the world. That's how this goes, like the Eli Musk of the world. They'll say, yeah, yeah, use all these products, use all these products. Guess what? Come to daddy, come to mommy. <laughs> wild, absolutely wild. Kappa, HG, let's go take a look at this copper back, because what we had out here is that you had Southern Kappa, sign of strength as well. Okay, so Kappa's off the bottom. Let's look at this. I mean, this is this was going down for six months, five months to be exact. Okay, so not not doing that much, but you're gonna see we had SCCO come off the lows, and that was definitely a sign of strength on Friday. You know, so if you and and what SCCO did is also tested its swing rejected the swing, got underneath it. You can see how it got underneath it. it had, the, the volume we were dealing with there was uh, 1.9 million and 2.4. It went under it with 2 point, just 2 million. Then it went above it, and then it really had a sign of strength with uh, 1.9. Now you're backing down. See, this is how you like to back down. See that 480? That's how I like to back down. That's in the copper market. Now, we also had is in the iron ore market. Iron ore also came off its lows. If we take a look at iron ore, what you're gonna see this contract, we're dealing with 770 now. And if we go to Valley, you're gonna see Valley also broke out its lows, false breakout, break down rather, I put this on a weekly, see how this thing shakes out. You know, we came, we, ne we, never, we never hit the low. The low that we're talking about here on Valley is $11.70. It got down to $12.51 and decided, nope, I'm not staying there. Hasn't broken the downtrend yet. But that's, that's kind of a heads up. Um, let's go to the oil and take a look at oil because oil, you can see the Saudis are desperate right now. And it's not going to help them. They had two weeks ago, you had one of their, their ministers come in, you know, blaming the short sellers for basically oil going down. It's like that. That's always an indication, folks, that you get trouble in paradise. Today, you know, they they reduced their oil by a million barrels. That's what they're claiming anyway. Um, you know, oil ran as high as 75 pre-market. Guess what? It's at 72. And this one's lower price, man. That's how this is working. And it makes sense because, you know, when you look at the aspect of what, I don't, what folks I don't think really understand is that the Saudis right now, you know, only push out 9 million barrels a day. That's not a lot of oil. I mean, they can push out a lot more if they want, but they can push out a lot more because the fact of the matter is that little by little, that market is getting chipped away. The first, first you have, you know, the Chinese aren't opened wide open yet. That's a big deal. The amount of vehicles using less gas are making a big deal. And the thing that's coming in, I, I suspect, and it depends, I guess, which city you're in, but I can tell you from looking at um, Tampa and St. Pete, this electric bike deal um, is, is a big deal. You know, this started out here, let's see, I believe it's five years ago. Five years ago, the first electric bikes started in Tampa and St. Pete. And when I say started, almost at you know, every five or 10 corners downtown, you have these little, a whole bunch of electric bikes. You just put your credit card on it. You just grab the bike, you drop it. In St. Pete, you gotta drop it at another facility, but they're all over the place. In Tampa, you can drop the bike anywhere, which is insane. But they just did a new contract with a company that, that the bikes are actually better. And everyone's using them, folks. I mean, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, if you're only, they go, they go at 25 miles an hour. It's like, you know, I can see that's little by little that thing gets shipped away, man, as to how much gasoline and oil we're actually gonna be using. Dow, Dow Industrials right now down 142. Nasdaq's flat, S&P's uh, down to 250. Don't forget about it, man, Mr. Tim Moyd, folks. Go over to our website, sign up for that uh, S&P 500 gold or both of them. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks, to Dow. Dow 160, NASDAQ up two, S&P's down three. Let's go to Seiko. We take a look at this. is another copper stock. And, you know, it was quite a move, but... Uh, by most, most of these copies, it's the same with Taseco, okay? Now, what you have with Taseco, which is pretty cool, is this. I put this on a weekly, and what you're gonna see, you came right back to its strength with light volume on a weekly. So the strength here, that was in December. We went up with 9.2 million. We just rejected it with 4.2. So that says now it's gonna go to the top of the range again. You know, we'll see. How this shakes out, let me put this on a monthly for a second. So on a monthly, that swing got taken out with volume. Yeah, on a monthly, you know, this, yeah, this is a highly volatile stock, but on a monthly again, it's like, okay, this, this two, that, that high is gonna be had again, 267, take a while. But you can see how this came down, even on, a, even on a monthly. See how this came down on a monthly? This came down last month with 20 million versus the last time we came down with 56 million. That's what you'd like to see. And it never made the, the last swing low. So that wants higher price. That's telling me that the copper is off the bottom. You have iron ore off the bottom. It's a, it's, my take is that Right now, you see a complex ABC structure down on gold. That's how this sets up right now. So we'll see how that shakes out. And this is, gonna be about, this is still about the dollar, folks. That's, that's the reality. It's still about that dollar. 
If that dollar wants to run to that uh, 106, 107 line, you know, it'll hurt things. Oil, my take, oil still wants lower price. And, you know, if we break this first level of the oil, oil's still at 71. I mean, that $60 level on oil is game out there. That's how this is shaking out. So we'll see how it all shakes out. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off, 9 a.m. Great show, folks. Look at him, folks.